ex-US Marine saw massive UFO being loaded with weapons by secret military. On June 12, 2023, Dr. Stephen M. Greer, a renowned founder of the Disclosure Project, presented a compelling three-hour UFO conference. This conference featured whistleblowers who shared their astonishing testimonies. For 33 years, Dr. Greer has dedicated himself as a volunteer to the Disclosure Project. His most recent event, before this was held 22 years ago, on May 9, 2001, where 22 individual sectors participated. In this long disclosure event, Dr. Greer presented his investigations on secret programs, and he was joined by six courageous whistleblowers who shared compelling information about covert operations. Among them was Michael Herrera, a former United States Marine who shared an astonishing account from 2009, where he and five comrades saw a giant UFO being loaded with weapons while serving in Indonesia. During this incident, they were threatened at gunpoint by unmarked US forces at the scene. Herrera was assigned to the 2nd Battalion, 5th Marines, described as the most decorated infantry battalion within the Marine Corps. This battalion was part of Operation Quetzana, a humanitarian mission in the Philippines. In Herrera's unit was affiliated with the 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit, primarily conducting maritime operations across Southeast Asia in partnership with the 7th Naval Fleet. Herrera was on the US Denver and went to help after a big tsunami and earthquake hit Padang City in Indonesia. It was surprising because it was Herrera's first time doing a mission like this. When Herrera and his team got there on October 8, they got some important information. They found out that some of President Obama's family might be there. They knew it was a dangerous place because of the threat from terrorist activities prevalent in Indonesia. Their job was to keep the area safe and give people things they needed like medical supplies food, water, and shelter. Herrera was picked to be one of the main people for this job. When they landed in Padang, it was all broken and damaged. Everything looked bad with fires and floods everywhere. They quickly went to a higher place so they could see better and plan. They had to be ready for anything. Herrera and his team, armed with Medi 16 4 rifles, advanced about 300 meters, maintaining a tactical column formation. Their primary goal was to maintain situational awareness, be prepared for potential engagements, and execute their mission amidst the harrowing conditions. Herrera had a camera and was taking pictures of a damaged area from a high spot, but he noticed something strange. A weird object in the jungle. This thing looked different from the trees around it, it changed colors from light gray to dark black and spun around. This was so memorable for Herrera that he could not forget it for 14 years. He and his team took pictures and videos of this odd object. As they got closer to the strange object, Herrera and his team saw a group of soldiers. These soldiers looked American a group of soldiers, or as Herrera described them, a rogue military force. What made this encounter even more unsettling was their distinctly American appearance and gear. These were not just any soldiers. They were equipped similarly to elite special operations units, dressed in black camouflage and donning OTVs. Finding these soldiers made things even more confusing. Why were they there? Were they part of a secret mission? Or something even stranger? Herrera's story made people think a lot about what really happened that day. His story mixed a strange flying object, its odd behavior, and meeting mysterious soldiers. This made people wonder about secret things happening in the world. As the tension escalated, Herrera and his team were on high alert. These soldiers looked like US Special Forces but acted differently. Their clothes, weapons, and tools showed they were well-trained. Even though Herrera and his team were outnumbered, they stayed calm. They did not talk to the strange soldiers and moved away carefully. Their main goal was to keep safe and learn more about the unknown flying object and the mystery. 
Many questions arise about this strange meeting. Maybe these soldiers were doing secret missions without permission. Or were they guarding the strange flying object? Herrera thought maybe they were there to protect the craft and was curious about where it came from. The flying object Herrera saw had unique features. He noticed its color changes and its pyramid-like top. It also made a sound like a guitar amp or a machine. They had no insignias on. They had no ranks, Herrera began, describing the unidentified soldiers who confronted him and his team. The soldiers' attire and equipment far surpassed the standard-issue gear Herrera. Their M4-4 rifles were enhanced with advanced combat optical gun sights, ACOX and PEX-16, IR illumination devices, indicating advanced capabilities and possibly specialized traits quickly. Hera remembered these soldiers yelling at him and his team. They made scary threats, suggesting they could harm them severely or even make them disappear. The soldiers were very thorough, they checked everyone's identity carefully, using devices that looked like they were scanning their military cards. This made Herrera believe they were very organized and knew what they were doing. Herrera also saw some trucks that looked suspicious. The trucks had special containers, and there were rumors that these might be used for illegal activities, like smuggling people. This worried Herrera because the area was already facing many problems. The strangest part was when Herrera saw an odd flying object. It appeared suddenly and then left quickly without making any noise or causing any disturbance. Herrera and his team were shocked and did not know what to make of it. So as we're going back between these guys, as well as what's going on in the background at that time, there were four of these trucks, which were 350s. However, it was what these trucks were transporting that took center stage in Herrera's recounting. He described the craft in vivid detail. It floated right above the tree line. He emphasized its unique shape, stating, on each corner, it emanated a light. It was either red, yellow, green, or blue, only those four colors. I can distinctly remember. This octagonal craft, with its mesmerizing lights, seemed to defy conventional understanding as Herrera continued to describe its departure. As soon as it was able to break that tree line, Herrera recounted, it shot over to the left, basically where the ocean was, at a speed so fast I would estimate probably three, four, five thousand miles an hour instantaneous like that. The craft's rapid movement, devoid of any discernible sonic boom or disturbance, left Herrera and his team in a state of shock and bewilderment. From Herrera's story, it sounded like he saw something very strange and unexpected. He did not understand what it was, and it left him with many questions. His story highlights the mystery of what he saw and suggests that there is a lot more to learn about such strange occurrences. After this weird encounter, Herrera was approached by someone from the Air Force. This person, even though not wearing a name tag, made Herrera sign a paper promising not to talk about what happened. The paper had confusing terms on it, and Herrera was left puzzled and scared about what might happen if he spoke up. As Herrera concluded his account, he made a compelling plea to Washington, urging political figures to address the situation. There are people who are either being hurt or killed by this, he emphasized, highlighting the gravity of the events he witnessed. According to Daily Mail, Herrera left the Navy in October 2011. His certificate of release showing four years of active duty and medals for National Defense Service. Global War on Terrorism Service, Humanitarian Service, Sea Service Deployment and a Sharpshooter Rifle Badge. He made several million dollars as an entrepreneur and now runs a private security company called Valkyrie Eye. In this interview with Jimmy Crux on Fade to Black Radio, Herrera said that during the operation, he had a Panasonic camera capable of capturing both 
Throughout their mission, he took several photographs and videos, capturing the devastation and potentially more. Herrera concealed this vital evidence in his dump pouch, which seemed to go unnoticed by the individuals overseeing the mission. When Herrera and his team got back to their ship, strange things started happening. As they gave back their weapons, they felt worried. They were scared about what might happen if their bosses found out about their strange experiences. After their tough trip, the Big Bay in the Philippines for a break. They tried to relax and have fun. But when Herrera went back to his ship, he found his camera in his locker. Sadly, the battery and memory card were gone. When he tried to use it again, it did not work. Herrera felt upset, but to his story. Herrera shared more about what he learned from his experience. He talked to people who told him about secret groups that do bad things. These groups hurt people and try to keep their actions hidden. But Herrera also met some good people who wanted to tell the truth about these secret operations. During an event with Dr. Greer, Herrera thought the containers they saw might have drugs. But someone from the group told him they were not drugs. This new information made everyone one. What were they really hiding? Why was it so secret? And how does this affect Herrera and his team? Herrera said that these mysterious people have been doing secret stuff since the 1990s. Most of them come from Jessok, a land surprised him. He originally thought they're made people from third world countries since these individuals. They keep their actions hidden and use their side. They shoot down two to three etcrafts a year, retrieve them, and then take them away for analysis or whatever they do with them. Additionally, they shoot down aircraft from other agencies for reverse engineering purposes. Most of the time, these retrieved crafts are destroyed. They don't return them. They often blow them up or discard them. The airspace isn't always open 24-7. It's restricted, especially during operations or testing. When restricted, it's limited up to 60,000 feet. Regrettably, some private aircraft have suffered tragic consequences because they didn't divert their course. These planes were targeted with advanced weapons, which aren't just experimental, they're regularly used. After such incidents, they dispose of the wreckage and bodies and issue missing persons reports. They are adept at keeping their secrets, and that's how their operations function. Herrera talks about a building that looks normal from the outside, but is full of secret work inside. Even though it looks old and worn out, inside, it is busy with top secret tasks. Most people working there come from places with lots of problems, like war or poverty. For them, the place might seem like a dream compared to what they had before. <laughs>